I can't imagine being an artist or what my art would have become without the experience of having been a teacher. I taught for 18 and a half years in the public schools here in New York City. And uh, it was a, absolutely an, a formative part of my career as an artist. It was the one thing that was left out, well, not the one thing, but it was one of the things, important things, that was left out of my career, my teaching. It was one of the things that was left out of my what? I don't know what I want to call it. Out of my experience at the university with all the art that I learned about and everything, I was not totally and completely prepared for what I was going to get from the children as a teacher. And that, that helped to develop me further as an artist, really. I was always told that children were fantastic artists. But when I became a teacher and experienced them, and the younger ones are the best. The little ones, huh? How about that? Uh, I can't imagine what would have happened to me as an artist if I had not had the experience of being a teacher. I, in the beginning, when I graduated from high school, I went to City College because City College was right up the street from where I lived, huh? And I used to see all these boys pouring out of the subway, going up the hill and down Convent Avenue to the City College of New York. And I asked my mother, I said, where are they going? And she said, they're going to City College. And I said, oh, because I had always been told as a little child that when I grew up, I was going to go to college. I mean, they started telling me that before I knew what a college was. So I said, they're going to City College? I said, well, that's where I want to go. Now, it didn't occur to me that everybody I saw coming up out of that subway was a boy. I'm going to City College. So I told everybody, you know, when I graduate from high school, I'm going to college. And they'd say, oh, really? And I'd say, yeah, I'm going to City College. And nobody ever told me, you know, that's a boys' school. Anyway, when, when I graduated from high school and I went down there to register, and they asked me, well, what do you want to major in? I was not prepared to say that I wanted to major in art, actually. Because if you can realize, OK, we're talking about 1948. In 1948, Women didn't work. So I wasn't thinking about work. I was thinking about doing art. So I was there to learn how to do art, because I had been doing it all my life, but as a child on my own, and of course in school. But now I was going to get some professional training in art. But that I was going to be an artist, that had not occurred to me. Interesting, huh? I'm going to college, yes. To get an education, yes. Uh, and I, when they asked me, well, what do you want to major in? And I said, art. I want a liberal arts degree in visual art. So they said, well, you can't do that here because this is a boys' school. And I said, what? Uh, what? I, I didn't hear that. Yes, you did. This is an all-boys school. You could go to Hunter, you could go to Brooklyn College, but you can't go to the City College because the City College of New York is an all-boys school. You cannot get a liberal arts degree here. I was thrown. However, somebody there in the office said, wait a minute, uh, she could 
major in art and minor in education and get a degree teaching art. Okay? And I said, wow, I, I, I never thought of that. Because I come from a family of teachers, but not art teachers, okay? So I said, that's good. And my family will love that, <laughs> too, because I'll be a teacher. Yeah, and I'll be teaching art. That's good. I like it. And that's how I was able to matriculate at the City College of New York. I quit teaching in 1973 so that I could work on my art full time because I needed to do that. However, I had learned so much from the children and hopefully I had given them so much. So we had a fantastic exchange and uh, I continued to um, go to schools and talk to the kids and stuff like that. But I had my time to do my work. And you do need time to do your work when you're an artist. I like waking up in the morning and feeling my inspiration for the day, for the day's work in my studio. I like working, like say, from 8 in the morning to 12. That's four hours, then have my lunch, and then come back up to my studio and hit it again from one, two, three, four. Okay, so let's say eight hours a day. That's good. And then the rest of the day, I could do other things, whatever I want. And I also do a lot of writing, of course. So the writing might come in uh, in the later part of the day, or sometimes I'll switch it around. But I have a schedule to work on art every day. It inspires me. And I look for the inspiration for each day's work. Where will it come from? I like being inspired. Well, I get, I get my ideas from being me. Who I am and why I am who I am. What am I about? It's very personal, being an artist. And um, I, being an African-American and a woman, these two things are challenging in the art world. And I, I learned pretty early that uh, being challenged was what I was going to have to do. I, I just couldn't cover it up and act like it's not happening. It is happening. Um, so I have pursued my struggle as an African-American woman in my career as an artist. Think it's good. No, 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 that's no good. It has to be something that you love. I have to go away feeling good about it. For me, it's a very personal kind of thing, being an artist. And the little ones can do that with ease. As they get older, sometimes they, <laughs> they lose the confidence, shall I say, to be themselves, who and what they are. Uh, teachers also have to be careful not to let the children see their work because then they sometimes feel like, well, the teacher is right, so uh, maybe I better do it this way or that way. No, don't show them your work. No. Just inspire them to do theirs. Give them the materials they need, the media, the opportunity, and 
let them see a variety of different kinds of work from different cultures in the world and let them come up with their idea. So that before each lesson, they do need to have a direction. Now they can deviate from the direction, but there should be something. It shouldn't be just, okay, here's some materials, make a picture, no. So a little talk about walking through the forest and what you saw there and what happened and, and uh, what could you imagine happened while you were walking through the forest, which is across the street from where you live. Um, did you see anything there? What did you see? And what happened? Did something happen there? And, and, and different kids in the class would come up with different ideas about what happened. They saw a cat that was very strange looking. And uh, that cat followed them uh, all, the, all the way through the forest that they went to. And they, they saw these beautiful flowers and they were blah, 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 and, and then have other kids uh, um, add to that story. It could be a story about walking through the city or uh, getting up in the morning and what I saw first or whatever. But something that is common to their experience and all of them can add to it their own direction. And those are the kinds of lessons that I used to teach. And it was just fascinating the different, the, the variety of images that would come out of that and how the kids would tell their, get up and tell their own story about uh, the first day maybe they, uh, what, saw a, the first day they went to the zoo and, and saw some particular animal or the first day they, what, saw snow. Maybe they come from a part of the country where there's no snow, huh? But they did see it or they can imagine what it would be like to, to live somewhere where there's snow. Because in San Diego, of course, you know, although they were high school people, I mean, they were college people, um, there's no snow, except if you go way up in the mountains there is. But um, these are ways to have them start to, before the lesson, have them begin to see things in their mind's eye first and then interpret it in their way, in their art. But for the teachers who are teaching them, you are so important to these children and that they have their supplies and the time, the time, the place, and the opportunity to do their work. That's what children need. And that's what hopefully we can continue to, to supply them with because those are the next artists coming up. They have to have it from children. You can't just decide all of a sudden after you get to be what, 30 years old that you're gonna be an artist. But, and you would do it if you had the opportunity. So that's why, that's, that's the job of the schools and the teachers to make sure that children do have that opportunity to do their work. So thank you for all the teachers who are involved in that process. You're doing a fantastic job and I salute you. And what should I say? Goodbye and good luck. <laughs> You're doing a great job. Thank you.